Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This channel I'll be teaching you about how to start a freight dispatch company. So you can leave your job and quit going up into them people job every day, miserable, become your own boss. Take your time back. Um, in this video, I wanted to talk to you guys um, about kind of some steps that you need to take and expand on some steps, a few things that I already talked about. If you've already did what I said, you have created your LLC or your corporation or whatever, you've established yourself as an independent contractor. I did talk about this in the last video as well, make sure you're marketing. Once you um, have your clients, if they have a new business, you wanna make sure you're getting them signed up with these brokers so they'll be able to haul that freight. And if they are new, if you're a new dispatcher, it can be a little like brain racking to deal with new authorities. But there are quite a few brokers who will deal with people and their new authorities on the first day. I'll give you a few here, JB Hunt, um, TQL, that's another one, and Landstar. They'll let you haul on day one if these people have new trucks. Like, take that opportunity. You guys grow your business together because they might buy more trucks. You'll have another client, another um, truck. Cause like I said in my last video, to make $100,000 a year, a dispatch and freight, if you charge like 7%, 8%, you just need like six or seven trucks. So just just keep at it, keep calling these people, even if you get discouraged, come, come back to my videos, come watch my videos. I'm gonna make sure in every video I add a little bit of encouragement there because six or seven trucks, $100,000 a year, you can dispatch from anywhere. You can dispatch from on vacation. I'm, I've dispatched when I went to um, Arizona to spend um, time with my family. I dispatch when I go to, when I'm um, on vacation, even when I'm over the road with my partner while they're driving their truck. You can do this from every, from, from anywhere. Next thing you wanna do is you wanna talk to the person who's actually gonna be driving the truck because one thing that I did say was uh, the, the carriers, the people that you're gonna be calling to solicit your services to, they could or could not be the drivers. They could be uh, just the owner, you know, they just got rich or not and they just bought a truck and they wanted to um, run a, a business. You wanna establish where they wanna run. As a dispatch service, you don't tell them people where they cannot run, but I suggest you learn the market. By market, I mean learn where um, to send your trucks, good areas to send your trucks. To be honest, I'll say Chicago. Um, is one of my favorite places, uh, New York, uh, New Jersey, that area, California, they a lot of the times have really good freight. So you wanna know where to send your truck and it can make or break whether or not your truck is sitting there. I just wanted to say it can be easy to put a lot on your, as a dispatcher, um, to be hard on yourself. Just remember how much money your carrier makes. It's dependent upon you as a dispatcher, but it's also dependent upon how much the driver or you know it, it, of the truck wants to drive. So you want to establish where they want to go. Like I said, I'm a driver myself. Don't send me to Colorado. I will quit that job ASAP. So you want to make sure you um, are establishing with your drivers where they want to drive because um, it's some places that they will not go. Even uh, some drivers, like real specific, it's even some, some, some uh, warehouses that they won't go to anymore. So you want to find a way to stay organized and keep all of this information, um, which I also keep in a file in Google Drive under the company's uh, name. And I'm gonna show you guys how I did that as well. I'm gonna try to screen record on my phone because honestly, I do a lot of this stuff on my phone. Once you figure out um, their level of comfortability driving in certain states, and let me tell you from a driver's point of view why that's important. As a truck driver, you're driving, you got 80,000 pounds in this truck, you, you got a 40,000 pound load driving down the side of a mountain, you know what I mean? That's why as a driver, I didn't like to drive in Colorado. I don't like to drive in New York because the streets are too skinny. I'm, I was a great driver like last night, but it was nerve wracking, it's stressful. It didn't feel worth it. So you wanna make sure you're talking to your drivers about their level of comfortability. So the next thing you wanna um, have established, you introduce yourself and you talk to them about their level of comfortability, where you wanna drive it, where do you not wanna drive it? And make sure you do not send them to those states. <laughs> don't send them people where they do not wanna go. That's, that's that's really important. I'm talking to you guys as a driver, not a dispatcher. That's very important. Cause the driver is really the glue of the business. Find out about your driver's um, 
home time, about how long they want to stay out. In one of these videos, I'm gonna talk about terminology, the terms that we use frequently as freight dispatchers and um, drivers and just in the logistics industry, um, period. One of the things uh, you will see a lot is OTR, that means over the road. So ask them, do they want to be, are you OTR? Are you local? Do you drive local? Of course, means like in the same state. Um, do you drive regional, which means, um, you know, this state and the surrounding states. So you want to talk to them about um, how long they want to do it. So are you are you going over the road with two weeks out, which means you driving, are you consistently picking up loads and driving for two weeks and then you want to come home to your family? My partner actually drives for six weeks or more at a time. That That's the driver that goes hard. It's not a lot of drivers who will do that. I personally was tired of staying out that long, which is why I'm here. Um, so, Find out about their home time. Don't beat yourself up, but do plan ahead. When your driver tells you that they wanna go home, if if your driver is in New York and they live in California and they wanna go home on the 5th and it's the uh, like the 31st, keep up with, with your driver. Uh, what's your ETA, what's your location? Because um, I just wanna know how far you are because you want to be able to get them home you want to start working them back home because you might not find a load directly from new york to california so you but you also want to set realistic expectations if they want to go home and they live in a dead market you know and they want to go home right now you know um you want to set realistic expectations if you can't get them home on that day Please talk to them and let them know, have an open line of communication, but you do want to make sure you get these drivers home around the times when they want to get home. If you got to get them home a little bit earlier, um, sometimes that may have to happen as well. So um, yeah, so those are the steps. And once you do all that, it's time to book a load. In my next video, um, I will, I'm going to do a part two to this because it's actually getting kind of long. I wasn't expecting this video to get so long, but in my next video, I'm going to um, talk to you about what to do when it's time to book a load. You've done all this, and in my next video, I'll talk to you about that. So thank you for watching. As always, please like, subscribe, and share this video with um, people and tell them to subscribe too because once I get to a thousand subscribers, according to YouTube, I'll be able to go live. Once I'm able to go live, y'all can come on here and ask me any questions you want to. For the people that are already running a dispatch service, you're nervous, I, I get it. Like, trust me, I get it. We'll be able to go live. Just please share my um, video and like, subscribe and comment. And as always, thank you for watching. Um, I need to find, figure out some kind of, some kind of outro. Thank you for watching. Bye.